I think this is, and I don't know if it's because I'm a father of two. Mm -hmm. I know you're a father of three. Um, I don't know if it's because we work with a lot of wealthy families, Mm -hmm. is that we see that rich people still don't set their kids up for success. And this one breaks my heart. There are statistics, and I I hear you say them all the time. You know, we always talk about how um, 80% of millionaires are first generation. And I always hear you say this thing, well, that is a great thing that you can pick yourself up by your bootstraps and you can build wealth. However, for that to be true, there has to be a dark side yeah. of that statistic. Well, think about this, and this is what the, the data shows. If it, and, and it does, to get 80%, there has to be a give. on. That means there must be a wash cycle, a big washout cycle on wealth. And here it is. 70% of wealthy families lose that wealth by the second generation. Mm-hmm. So that means your kids are going to spend your money after you pass yep. away. And then if it doesn't all wash out, then 90% lose their wealth by the third generation. Mm-hmm. So if your kids don't get you, your grandkids will. So there's that is a huge problem that this is, you know, people who build wealth immediately washes out with the second and then the, even the third generation. Why are kids who are given so many heads up opportunities? You know, they have essentially a head start mm-hmm. in a lot of ways on paper. Yep turn out to be washouts, There's there's got to be a problem with the way wealth is structured or how people are teaching their kids. Yeah, I think what's happening is that they are getting exposed, but they're not getting educated. They might have been taught the basics of investments or credit cards or that sort of thing, but were they taught the skills and the right money lessons that actually matter? It's a different thing to be proximate to money, to be around money, to see money, to see wealth, and to actually understand what things are necessary to create wealth, what decisions had to have been made by the generations before you to create the wealth that you are able to experience. And I feel like a lot of families show the kids this is the checkbook and this is how this works and this is what this is without teaching them the hard, softer, less tangible lessons around actually building wealth for the long term. I mean, think about it. I mean, financial order of operations. This is actually what to do with your next dollar. Just because your kids know what the stock market Mm -hmm. is, they might even be able to tell you where the stock market is if you ask, what's the S&P 500 trading at right now? They might know that. They might know what APR, Mm -hmm. or they know how to, 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 you know, go through a transaction at the, the store, or even applying for a credit card. But if you're not actually teaching them what is intrinsic value? Mm-hmm. And what are the behaviors, like the financial order of operations, how you know how to, to be the general, the field general for your army of dollars? That is the failure. Mm-hmm. Because as Dr. Stanley and Millionaire Next Door talked about, I think a lot of parents, we even do economic outpatient care. As kids get it, we, we, we give them this great life as their children. Then they even go into a young adulthood. And then instead of them realizing, oh my gosh, I had this great life with my wealthy parents, and now I'm out on my own, parents will subsidize mm-hmm. that that lifestyle through that economic outpatient care. And these kids never learned the the value, the scarcity, or even how to build and grow and expand your army of dollars. It breaks my heart. It really does. So what are some of the important lessons that we as parents ought to focus on? We ought to teach our kids about hard work. We ought to teach them the value of a dollar. Certainly if we live in an area of abundance, how do we get them to recognize the value even in a single dollar? How do we teach them how to live humbly even in abundance? How do we let them realize the consequences of poor decisions? If they have financial mismanagement, where does that go? And then how do we teach them, especially, especially coming from a position of abundance, how do we find value beyond money? How do we make sure that that's not the goal or the strategy or the outcome that they're striving for, but recognizing that money is nothing more than a tool that allows us to focus on the things in life that really matter. I think this is where wealthy uh, families ought to spend the majority of their time educating their children. Well, yeah. I mean, it it really is. We give them lots of fish instead of teaching them to fish. And that's a big problem. So let's talk about how do you do this better? How about, here's a good start, and this is a hard one because you might have grown up in a poor household, mm-hmm. and then you've reached, you've made a lot of sacrifice, you've made some good risk, and um, you've been rewarded now, and you're like, I don't want my kids to grow up in the same struggle I had. Yeah. That sounds so good on sounds paper. Good. It sounds, man, it's so noble. But if you're not putting scarcity in your children's life, how are they ever going to develop that skill that you learned to master and actually turn into abundance and wealth? They won't, and that, that's a big problem. Yep. Uh, another thing I think you can do if you really want to focus on doing it better is figure out how to let your children fail 
and feel the consequence. You know, I've got little kids, right? And so uh, they get a toy or they get something that they love, but they don't take care of it. They leave it out in the front yard or they break it or they don't handle it well. While we are in a position now where we could probably very easily replace that toy and just buy a new one and have it shipped within two days, we want them to learn, to understand that there is value to the thing that they had. And if we don't take care of our stuff, we won't always be in a position where we can just replace that stuff. So letting them understand the consequences around mismanagement, the decisions that they do make, can be a huge way to teach your kids to not rely on you for the rest of their well, lives. Well, it doesn't even have to be about buying stuff. Let them fail on things and then learn the consequences, but also how you get back on the horse mm-hmm. to recovery. I think that that is a skill set that if you come from humble beginnings, your parents didn't mean to give it to you. It's just that if you come from humble beginnings, there's a lot of no in your life. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of chances for you to try to figure this out on yourself. I think sometimes we, we essentially put bumpers around our kids when you grow up with abundance and it doesn't make them better mm-hmm. for it. And that's why we talk about encourage good behaviors. Yep. Bo, you do something that I think is really important. You talk about give, save, spend. What do you mean by yeah, that? Yeah, for my kids, every time they get money that comes in, whether it be birthday money or tooth fairy money or whatever it is, or maybe chores around the house, we say there's always three things that you can do when you get money. You uh, can give it, you can save it, or you can spend it. And we actually teach them to do it in that order. Okay, let's be generous first, and then let's save a little bit of it for the future, for some future goal, for some future purpose. And then whatever's left over, after we've given, after we've saved, then we can spend it. And we want our kids to think through every time that money comes in their possession, how do I navigate appropriately allocating dollars into each of those three buckets? Well, and then I, I, this one's kind of a twofer because because I, I'm talking about encouraging good behaviors. How about if you can also add an element of scarcity in there? And what I'm talking about is, is priming the pump on good behaviors of, think about this, your kids turn 16. If you live in an affluent community, it's not uncommon that a lot of your neighbors, I don't know if there's a lot of pressure because I see it in a lot of my neighbors, mm-hmm. they're all giving their kids really nice, nice cars. cars yeah. And I'm just like... I guess we'll see if that turns out to be a great idea. I think a character builder as well as something that will humble or let your kids see the value of every dollar is let them pay for half of their first car. Now, it's a hard decision. I I know that the new modern cars have all those safety sensors and everything else, but I actually exercised this with my oldest child, and I think it was an incredibly good value builder Mm -hmm. because driving a 12 to 14-year-old car can really help, especially if they have to pay for half of it show, hey man, I need to treat this thing with some some care because I have ownership in this. Mm-hmm. I have a dollar into this. And then also, when your kids get their first job, maybe that car leads to them now having the independence of, of being able to drive to their first job. When they start you know, doing anything that earns money that you have to report to the government and actually file a tax return, do something that encourages them to do like a Roth IRA, a custodial Roth, yeah. or start investing and do a dollar for dollar match. Just like a good 401k has employer match that primes the pump. Why don't you as a parent start the good behavior and start to get some skin in the game of them thinking about money in a healthy way by saying, hey, every dollar you save and invest, I'll match. I'll give. And it doesn't have to be if you're if you're struggling yourself, maybe it's 50 cents on the dollar. But you can do some type of encouragement so that they start seeing what good behavior and what good actions can do in the long term. And it also adds that element of scarcity that too many wealthy kids struggle to actually have in their lives. That's great. I think another thing that that we can think about as we think about raising our kids and raising them well is show them that true value is not material. Show them that there is more to being wealthy, that there's more to life, there's more to the things that we do and the decisions that we make besides just money. And now there's a little bit of cold water for you. This will only be true for your kids if it is true for you. Are you acting in such a way at home, having such conversations with your spouse, interacting with your kids in such a way that would suggest money is not the most important thing? It is important and it is a tool and it's something we want to manage and steward well, but it's not the goal. It's not the reason. It's not the purpose. It's just the thing that allows us to get to the goal, to get to the reason, to get to the purpose. If you can instill that in your kids at a young age, you're going to have a much higher likelihood of setting them up for future success. 
Yeah, th- this is one uh, that really gets me because I see so much opportunity. Mm-hmm. You would think coming from money would actually be the chance of a lifetime to build upon what came before you. And unfortunately, it's just not happening. But I do say this. It's okay to spend money on some things. Sure. Blossoming memories. Yep. I'm all about travel, building memories, because not only do you get to keep that, but I think your kids also will get to to have those memories even when you're no longer here. And that's its own in a, in a, in a legacy discussion f- form. I think that building memories is such a valuable thing. Focus on me- blossoming memories over giving them stuff. That's wow. where that's something that's very valuable. But all this brings to a, to a, 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 a really a head to the fact that wealth and you and you said it. I love it. Money is a tool. It's definitely not a goal. That's right. And and it's so much better. We talk because we can move past the kids and money. We can talk about just the fact that if you're blessed with a high income, mm-hmm. don't waste that opportunity. Yep. You know, there's something. I think a lot of people that, you know, it's the old adage, as long as they have money and they can afford their life 200 bucks at a time for everything they finance, they think they're okay, but they don't really own their time. They, they are the, the slave to the wage of having to cover their obligations. And that's a scary thing. Mm-hmm. I want you to actually have full independence, full ownership without any obligation whatsoever. And that's what, if you can just invest a little bit of today for that great, big, beautiful tomorrow... I think you'll have abundance beyond your wildest imagination.